well. Need to eat. 100% just need to eat. Um, I thought I ate, but I guess I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Is it worth it to just hold off? Might be able to flicker for a little longer. In the cycle. Ah, oh, that's fine. Oh, that's a lot of good numbers. A lot of good numbers, damn. Side reel horizon, okay. Tea house. Fucking money. Oh god, no, I didn't. Oh. Damn it. Damn it, okay. Well, I wanted to do something else as well, but. Let's get some energy. Why don't we do, um, could help them out here. It's a win or late story play. We can wait, I guess. Clubhead caps. Okay, we gotta wait another time to do a really good one of that. We do this. energy that's awesome hell yeah timber tea house that is not great but we're not doing that yeah why don't we try this Oh. 
Ja. Can I buy more? Damn. Okay, more scraps. Okay, fine. That's fine. It's hoping for something else, but that is um that is a that is fine. I'm not finished with my tasks. What other tasks do I have? What other tasks do I have? Look around, look around. What tasks did I miss? Across the greenway. Was there something over here I missed? Oh. Pizza. Uh, the trail ahead extends into an overgrown section of the greenway. At the far end of the ring, where the long, lazy curve of the greenway becomes the shattered landscape of the waste, things are oddly quiet. Ahead stands a vast farm stack, broken from its axis by rust and force, and lying amongst the overgrown landscape like an ancient temple. It is stained with moss and algae, flows of green running out of its broken tank like a frozen brackish tide. This is where Ashton is hiding, and you're pretty you are pretty sure. All your intent intuition points to the shadow beneath this collapsed superstructure. You roll the calm headset Ankita gave you in your palm. Let's call her. You slip the headset into your ear and it fizzes with static. After a few moments you hear Ankita, sleeper, have you located the target? A doubt enters your mind. Can you be sure he is there? Copy. Hold tight until I get there. The static cuts out. The channel dead. You hold your position and watch the trail. Ahead, the stars wheel with the motion of the eye, and your mind wanders. You try to imagine what this place looked like before the collapse. All ordered rows of crops, corporate pleasure gardens, glowing farm stacks. Now it's a wilderness, a strange overgrown biosphere bordered by the void of space. You smile, despite everything. It seems like an improvement. Sleeper. Akita's hiss brings you out of the reverie. He in the collapsed stack? I think so. She gives you a look. You better be right. Well, there's no way I'm following that trail. If he's up there, he'll have eyes on that. On that for sure. She glances around the landscape. Let's keep to the end of the Work our way around. She heads off towards the central spine of the greenway with you following close behind. It is slow going there, where the overgrowth meets the metal wall, but it's so concealed that you can barely see the glass roof high above. Akita somehow seems to know where to go. Akita works her way through the dense overgrowth, pushing aside branches and fronds. It is exhausting and you desperately want it to rest, but Akita shows no signs of letting up. Up ahead, there's a faint glow from the collapsed stack. Akita leads you around the side to a broken tank. You both step through the opening, trying to avoid the broken glass that sits among the moss and algae. You work your way up the slanted tank, Akita setting a deliberate pace. Somewhere water drips, and you swear you hear birdsong. Hanging plants catch the light, coating the place in a pale, sickly green. Ankita reaches the edge of the tank, where it meets the central drum, and holds up a hand for you to stop. You inch forward, and look over the edge. The vast drum is like a cistern, with plants growing on all sides, and wet mossy islands at its base. It is beautiful, and for a moment you can't see anything but tones of green. Then you see the sleeper. In a faint circle of light descending down through the drum, the sleeper lies slumped at an odd angle. They are surrounded by crates, and besides them, on one of the mossy islands, there is an object. A cylinder set on a tarp that is connected to the sleeper's head. You flinch. Are they one of the others? One of the ones that escaped with you? You squint, trying to recognize them. They are twisted, broken open, raw. You look away. Akita doesn't look at you. She doesn't look at the sleeper. She fixes her eyes on the object. That's Amber's mind ship, she says. And you suddenly recognize the cylinder. Wait. You turn around Kita to speak, but she is already gone. She drops off the edge of the tank and lands on one of the mossy islands. Her armor letting out a hiss as it absorbs the impact. There's no way it's this simple. Why, why would... 
the shot hits her. I knew it. It's a fucking trap. We knew it was a trap. Come on. Why would a, a mine, like one of those like fucking like ship mines, just out and about? They, they're like 300 fucking credits. Cryo. Um, the shot hits her shoulder piece, the ceramic armor cracking but holding as she braces into the impact. Then she launches herself forward, the now activated armor launching her across the drum. The shot goes wide before she reaches the cover of the crates beside the sleeper. Shit! You hear the shout from one of the tanks high on the far wall. Ankita reaches over and wraps a hand around the thick connection between the ship mine and the sleeper. What is she doing? She just sort of wraps a hand around the thick... Huh. You better come down here, I'll rip this right out of your head! She screams at the wall of tanks. You shiver at the suggestion. Oh my god. The ship mined for the sleeper? We, we should stay silent. There's a long pause. All you can hear is the dripping of the water running down the walls of the drum. Then Ashton calls out. I'm coming down, Ankita. Don't do anything stupid, for God's sake. He appears at the far side of the drum, stepping through the shallow water, rifle raised above his head. Oh, wow. He's cool looking. Drop the gun, Ankita shouts. He throws it down into the moss. As you lean out to watch, you see him catch your eye, clocking your presence. What are you up to here, Ashton, you sicko? She stands, keeping her sidearm trained on his head. You ripped my ship mine for what? Some freakish experiment? Ashton approaches with shaking hands, his eyes now fixed on the connection, connecting bundle of wires that Ankita still has hold of. Steady, Ankita. It isn't like that. I need that sh the ship mine. You have to understand. They would have died without it. What are you talking about? I don't give a shit why you ripped my ship mine and crippled my ship. I should put you down right now. She tightens her grip on the connection. Typical of you, Ankita. No curiosity, Ashton smiles shakily. That's why I never asked for it. For your help. You only look after yourself. He nods at you. That sleeper up there? They're just bait, right? To draw me out? Ankita sucks a breath in. Are you trying to give me more reasons to shoot you? I love them, Ankita. Ashton looks at the crumpled sleeper. I love them and they were going to die. I knew you would never understand that. He starts closing the gap between himself and Ankita now, slowly, inching forward. Uh-oh. Don't do that, Ashton. Ankita snarls. Don't do that. Let the wires go, Ankita. Let us go. If you don't get out of my way, he inches closer. Please. I can't let you take it, Ashton. Ankita hardens her stare. You stole it from me. You left me for dead. She shakes her head. You think I'm going to trust you? After all that? I need it, Ankita. I need them to survive. Ash is in reach of the sleeper now, of Ankita. I'm going to take them now, Ankita. He raises a, a hand. I'm going to take the ship mine and go. Ankita loosens her grip on the co connection a little. Her hand is shaking now. Stop, Ashton. She lowers the gun a little. Stop. Seeing her drop her guard, he makes his move. A blur of movement, a struggle, a shot, another, another. You recoil back behind the edge as they ricochet around the inside of the drum, the sound deafening you. When you crawl back to the edge, Ashton is bleeding into the water, the red and the green. Ankita is standing at the center of the drum, the severed connection in her hand, the water drips endlessly, drip after drip after drip. You force yourself to look at the broken sleeper. There's no sign of life, of humanity. They're just another broken object among other broken objects, while all around, living things grow and thrive. Ankita finally looks back at you, tears in her eyes. She begins to say something, something that might be sorry, but you are already gone. Oh, fuck. should talk to Ankita about what the fuck that was. Oh my god. You're dead. Let's go talk to Ankita. Where 
fishy. Where is she? Do I go home? Oh. Bad, not bad. New drive discovered. Derelict unit. Grow mushrooms. Improve the overload. looks forgotten. A project that never made it. With enough scrap, you might be able to seal it up. Oh, really? Let's fix it up. I think we have so much scrap. Tuck the scrap into the shattered interior. It's hard to imagine this place as a home, but it can't be worse than the container. Yeah, now. Oh, now we have to fucking build it. Yeah. Try to use some yada get insider work. Okay. Ah. Oh, okay. Feel like now is the time I want to use it. The stabilizer. Sick. All right. We 
got spores. Where are my other spores? Do I not have spores? Alright, we gotta go get some spores. Give me some spores. Spores. Hell yeah. back um, ooh, I feel like we should eat first I think that's gonna be a good choice to be honest with you here's Matsutake's Inhales a deep autumnal aroma of the Matsutake caps and nods. He seems impressed. Okay. And three days to prep. Okay. Low end. Let's try. Oh, random scrap item. Try again. Might be a low ender. Hey, I'm a low ender. I know everything in the low end. Oh, cast our curious data fence. You cross between two walls of unit, one of the cavernous streets at the center of low end. The pressurized bridge is full of. Fact of tab tabla, the shouts of children, the whir of air filters. Sleeper, you turn to see a man sitting at the tabla table alone, somehow untouched by the hustle and bustle of people around. He gestures to the stool on the opposite side of the table. It's low end data beds. Huh. I like that he's got some backgammon going on. I like. Oh my god! In that's. A, I like that. I like that. I like his old get up. Um, but I really like the fucking like fanny pack up there. That's a cool look. That's a vibe. Uh, let's sit. You sit on the middle stool and he starts setting out the board and with counters, or at least the filter caps low enders typically use in their place. Caster, he says by the way of in intro introduction, looking over his glasses. Night or day? Yes, just drink at the caps. Crudely sprayed white and black. Night. He nods. The black counters are already on your side. Let's begin. <laughs> you take a plastic die each, pit it in warrant, and roll to determine who starts. Caster rolls a six, you're a four. I lead. He smiles and begins to move his first cap precisely along the board. The plate passes back and forth between you, the dice changing hands as the caps spread along the board. As it does, Caster speaks, eyes not leaving the caps. It isn't usual to see a sleeper on the eye. That's why I wanted to play you. You take a turn, rolling a five and a six. Let's play carefully. After all, a sleeper's mind must be somehow different to a human one. Being emulated, I mean. As Caster ta talks, you build up a wall of caps, stacking them safely across the board. Progress is slow, but you remain unexposed. I don't mean to offend you, Caster meets your eye. I merely see that you are by definition different. What has been subtracted in the emulation? What has been added? He slides a single cap onto an open point, a risk and an opportunity. He hands you the dice. Do you ever think about this sleeper? About what you were before and what you are now? Always. You roll a double one and solidify your wall. Cast whistles. The holding game. Commendable. It can be brave to build from what came before. He rolls the dice and leaps your wall in a single move. We 
cannot idle too long, sleeper. The slower we move, the sooner we are caught. The past you is not just an idea, a concept for you. It is a living, breathing person. He looks up over his glasses, his eyes bright and wide. You split from them like a shadow splitting from its caster. They may be sleeping now, yes, but one day they will awake and carry on with their lives unaware of their fate, no matter what it may be. He hands you the dice, smiling. You are a branch severed from the main trunk, an offshoot who refuses to die, so to speak. You roll again, under pressure now, trying to slip your caps out from under caster before he solidifies control of the game. So what am I so what I am curious about is how you see yourself in all of this, Caster asks. What does this tangle of truths make you? Free. Yes, Caster looks away. With a glass to the crowded units on all sides, I can see that. Your life as an escapee was never meant to happen. Yet here we are. He starts removing caps. His home board now full. Your life is an offshoot. It can go anywhere from here. You try a few more rolls, attempting to get up back in the game, but Caster clears his home board with a sense of inevitability. He has known he was winning for a while. I feel I may have pushed too far, he slides another cap from the board. I apologize. My curiosity was a habit of getting the better of me. You roll a return. Uh, you roll to return a cap to the board, but all the spaces are blocked. Caster claps his hands apologetically. You play well, really. Your weakness is not your game. He smiles warmly. We have much to learn from each other. He slides his glasses back up his nose and sits back. I feel we could share knowledge, ideas, perhaps even data. His eyes glint with the, that last word. To our mutual benefit. He slides his final cap from the board. It is over. He has won. I'll see. Please, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. He holds up his palms. My intention is only to help you endure here. And if I am able, feed my curiosity. The game over, you notice the bustle of the walkway once more. The call of the children, the deliveries, the arguments, the reconciliation. Re the reconciliation. They wash over you as you stand and leave, cast your nodding goodbye as you do. Crossing the walkway, you replay the moves of the game in your mind, looking for an opening you are sure was there. Alright, caster. I should not have been selling all that shit. Oh well. That sucks, but... Oh boy. That's unfortunate. Patrolling. Hey. And you help a destitute man to the Tambor's kitchen where they feed him freely. You stand behind with the chefs and sample the dishes. Let's talk to Rabaya. This time you meet inside Rabaya's office, although now that you've seen it, office seems like the wrong term. You find her stood in, almost, in an almost bare, shadowy unit, midway through a sequence of stretches. There are two low stools and a terminal in the corner, but it seems that most of the space is taken up by a heavy punching bag rubber matting, and a stack of weights. When Rabaya turns to greet you, you realize she is missing an arm. Really? The prosthetic she usually wears is set in a cradle near the terminal, a web of colored wires running to it. Updates, she says, noticing you looking where her artificial arm usually is. Nothing to worry yourself about with. Nothing to worry yourself with. Of course. Sit, says Rabaya, gesturing to the two diminutive dimin Intuitive stools. You both settle on the stools. Rabaya crossing her legs on top and sitting straight back. Gia told me you have been doing the rounds, collecting tights, patrolling the ward. She smiles. Some of the enforcers are impressed. And I hear you handled a few difficult circumstances. Nicely done. I wanted to see for myself. She was in her eyebrows. See what for yourself. If I can trust you. I see. Rabaya flexes her neck side to side. And the conclusion? I'm still deciding. Well, sleeper, Rabaya says teasingly. Please keep us updated on any progress. She smiles a thin smile. Joking aside, I know that for you, life on the eye has been a struggle. But I hope we can do something about that from 
here onwards. Though some of our members may not see it this way. I know you are, you too are a refugee. She looks at you solemnly. That is why you have come to us. Enough, Rabaya. Sabine's voice cuts through the conversation. I am tired of listening to your affected nobility. They cr cross the room, Rabaya's baton in their hand, and lit with sparking electricity. Rabaya looks between the two of you. I suppose this ambush was another cooperation between you two. She looks strangely unfazed. Stay silent. Sabine pauses, thrown off by your silence. Rabaya takes this opportunity to act. She leaps from th the stool and fainting past Sabine, grabs a baton and twists it inwards. Man, should I have chosen a side? I didn't know she was going to do this. I knew she knew something was going to happen, but I didn't think it would be like this. She leaps from the stool and fainting past Sabine, grabs the baton and twists it inwards. She is by far the stronger, and she pushes Sabine to her knees, plunging the cracking end of the baton towards their chin. Oh shit, she leaps. Twisted inwards. She's by far the stronger and pushes Sabine to her knees, plunging the crackling end of the baton towards his chest. They freeze there, Sabine struggling to keep the cracking baton from their skin. Stop. Then you support them, Rabaya asks you, her eyes not leaving Sabine. Your loyalties are so easily swayed. Your loyalties are so easily swayed. I thought you were more than Yannick's attack dog, Rabaya. Sabine spits back. Are you not able to think for yourself? Rabaya holds the baton strong, and for a moment you think she is about to hammer it down into Sabine's chest. But, after a painful wait, she throws Sabine down instead, then spins the baton in her hand, thumbing a switch and sh shutting it off in a single move. Rabaya, explain. They both look at you, each still catching their breath, as if they had forgotten about your presence. Explain what? How the moment I call, my enforcers will come down here and take them away? Rabaya cracks her neck. You were lucky I didn't kill you. I should have had every right, right, every right, she shouts. The anger a release of ten- The anger a release of tension more than a threat. Sabine lifts themselves a little. Bruised from the fall, they roll onto the side and cough. Rabaya gives them some space. Sitting back on the stool, Sabine props themselves up on their elbow and fixes Rabaya with a hard stare. You have something to say? Rabaya taunts. Say it. This is your final opportunity, because after this, she laughs. No coming back. What's the point? Sabine breathes heavily. She refuses to listen to criticism of the great Yadigan project. Rabaya collects herself. Speak! She folds her arms and waits to be convinced. Sabine takes a breath, organizing their thoughts. They go to start, pause, then decide on another approach. Eventually, they say it. Yannick is a traitor. Rabaya immediately flinches, her eyes going to her prosthetic arm, her muscles clenching. But she rides it out, more eager to prove Sabine wrong than she is to hurt them, at least for now. When I came here, from SNR, they glanced at you, gauging your reaction. It was Yannick who was one of the first to support me, to look after me. I should have known then, but I was naive and afraid. Sabine turns to you. Sleeper, they take a breath. I know that I should have told you I worked for SNR long ago, but I thought you would abandon me, and you are my final friend. What you should know is that I left SNR because I was running for my life. I leaked documents on the sleeper program, on the illegal and immoral practices it relied on, to the press. SNR wanted me dead, and I fled as far as I could, to this refuge at the edge of the surrogate systems. Sabine stops to collect themselves. What does this have to do with Yannick? Rabaya interrupts. The sleeper knows you are SNR. I told them. And while you hide beneath the cover of being a whistleblower, you and I both know you worked on the sleeper program. Yannick told me as much. Sabine's face falls. It is true. They glance at you, and then away, ashamed. They lift their head. But it was Yannick, not me, who was the pocket of SNR. Rabaya flinches again. I can prove it. He made some kind of deal to keep me here, to tie me up in debt, to lock me away in exchange. Rabaya slams her hands on the desk. Just tell us, for God's sake. In exchange for those, Sabine finishes, nodding toward Rabaya's prosthetic arm in its cradle. 
he has been using Yadigan and forces, using you, as test subjects for SNR technology. I have the data to prove it. He's been bringing them in under the guise of stolen shipments and have me fit them, knowing each one is capturing data and sending it back to its makers. Her biofix expression has started to fade. Sabine produces a slate. It's all here. Thousands of hours of usage data, failure rates, error dumps. These are untested implants from Aya. They could fall out, they could short out, fail, cause cascading failures across a person's body. And they have. Sabine suddenly looks incredibly tired. I thought the error rate in the units was down to them being stolen or modified. I have tried to fix hundreds of failures in my time here. Not all of them. They stop, unable to continue. Rebire closes her eyes and breathes in. Then she opens up again. She holds out a hand to Sabine. Show me, she says. Later, much later, when you leave, Sabine is still talk, taking Rabaya through the manifest and usage data. Both of them crowd around the terminal as Sabine leads Rabaya through each layer of Yannick's betrayal. As you leave, Sab Sabine catches your eye. Is it, it is Sabine, right? It's not Sabine. Sabine catches your eye and something passes between you. Something like a thank you, or a sorry, or some other expression that communicates both sadness and hope. Hell yeah, we got two upgrade points now. Bio actions are discounted. Let's... Hey, that's some good shit. So, if I go to the Yadigan, this- oh my god, six, oh, it's only 64 now. And we're gonna be able to buy that. That's gonna be awesome. Hell yeah. This is really good. We're in a really good spot here. Alright. Let's go to bed.